I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about JavaScript footnotes, geographic auto-completion, sortable lists, and more. Let's check it out. First up, we have a project called Bigfoot. This is a jQuery plugin for empowering footnotes. I'm not sure about you, but I personally find footnotes very empowering. Mm. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at how it works. If you see this little ellipses right here, these three dots, click that and whoa, looks like we have an inline footnote. It's built for mobile devices and responsive responsive designs. Now it says that footnotes on the web are a pain somewhere. Uh, you click a tiny number, you get transported somewhere near the bottom of the page, you find the footnote, and then you have to go back to where you were before. Now this script goes through and makes that process, quote, painless. It automatically detects the footnote and then turns the link into an easy to click button like so. And that is exactly what it looks like. Isn't that absolutely wonderful? Now, as you would expect from basically everything that we cover on here, it is really, really easy to use. You include jQuery, you include Bigfoot, and then you just call the dollar sign Bigfoot method and you are good to go. Now, it has a wealth of options from customizing the delay, what happens to the page when you hover over the object, where to anchor it, just a, a ton of different things. So. If you do need to have footnotes on your web pages, this is a great plugin to look into. Extremely easy to use, very configurable. Check it out. You can find it in the show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse or in iTunes, search for us at the Treehouse Show. Very cool stuff. Well, I'll be looking forward to seeing that appear on Wikipedia next with all those wonderful colors. Good, good call, Nick. Good I think, call. I think it's coming soon. All right. Next up, we have this really cool post on Smashing Magazine about an Adobe Illustrator plugin called Spectre. Now, I actually have the plugin installed, so let's go ahead and switch over to Adobe Illustrator. This is the light version of the plugin. And here, I just went ahead and took a screenshot of Treehouse, of our new SAS Basics course. It's pretty awesome, by the way. You should definitely check it out. But anyway, here I have my Spectre Lite panel, and it is a paid app, but there is a free version with some limited functionality here. So I can go ahead and show you how this works. Now, let's say that I was making a layout or is making a modification to a layout, and I wanted to put a new element here. So I'm going to go ahead and drag out this box here. I'm going to say, well, I want this to be an area for maybe some tips about SAS or something like that. I could then go ahead and go into Spectre here, and I can click on one of these buttons like Width and Height, and boom, there we go. It's gonna go ahead and add the width and height with some markers there, so that when I pass this on to another designer or developer that actually will slice this up and turn it into real HTML and CSS, they can go ahead and know the exact dimensions of each individual element. Now, if we switch back to the article and we scroll down here, you can see some of the other settings that are available for Spectre. We can uh, make uh, width and height markings. We can also mark things with different types of arrows. You can change all sorts of options. So for example, that red line and text didn't really look great on that blue background, but we could go ahead and change that in the options. If we scroll down here, you'll see a couple of other examples. Here we go. You can see how you can go ahead and label different parts of the layout using Spectre. So pretty cool plugin. It's, uh, it is available for free, but uh, it has limited functionality unless you go ahead and pay for it. But it seems like it's, it's pretty nice if you're working on a larger team and you want to go ahead and label different parts of your layout. That's, uh, that's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely worth it. Next up, we have a library called GeoComplete. Uh, now, this is really, really interesting. If you have a text field and you want to have a place to go, you can start typing in part of a place. It will automatically complete it. It'll give you the auto-suggest functionality like you are used to maybe on Google or something like that. And there's even an option to scroll a map there as well. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, it's really, really neat. So this is a, a jQuery plugin, and here's a screenshot of it. But if we click on it, we can get a little demo right here. So if we type in an address, I type in OR, and it auto-completes Orlando, Florida. 
click the find button or press enter and boom, it appears right on the map. Now, uh, as you can see, there is really, really not a lot of code involved, but there are definitely ways to configure it. There's a, a ton of stuff that you can do if you don't want it to autocomplete on the map. It doesn't have to, uh, but you can add a preview if you want to. Latitude, longitude, just a ton of different options. You can make the map draggable, zoom in, put in a ton of different details. So really, really easy to use jQuery plugin. Go ahead and check it out if you need to put maps on your site and have the results auto-completed. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is Origami. What'd you call me? Which is a mix of origami and DOM, or document object model. And on the site it says the web is flat, but now you can fold it up. So this is just a little JavaScript library that allows you to fold up different DOM elements. So you can go ahead and drag and they'll go ahead and fold up like so. Now, if you go ahead and click on one of these demos here, it will create a random folding function. So we'll just pick one of the functions that are available in Origami and it will go ahead and fold them like so. so Pretty cool, uh, not a whole lot to say about it. Optionally, you can include it as a jQuery plugin or you can just include it as a standalone piece of JavaScript. But if you want to go ahead and fold up some stuff on your site like origami, maybe you're embedding a map and you want to unfold the map. Ooh, mm -hmm. ooh. You can go ahead and do that. Could be good for like a restaurant menu too. Yeah. And it's responsive, mm. so that's neat. And it's really fun to say. Next up, we have a, another JavaScript plugin. This is called list.js. This is a really interesting plugin that makes it really, really easy to search, filter, and sort lists, tables, and more. Oh, huh, that's so weird. List.js. I thought that was going to do something else. Yeah, I thought it was going to make it fold like origami, huh? Huh. So anyway, this, uh, this is really, really neat. Um, and it is just vanilla JavaScript, so you don't need to be using a library or anything like that. Let's, let's click on over to examples. Here is a basic list. I can click the sort by name button and without very much code at all, it is immediately sorted. Or if I want to filter, just start typing in some of the letters here and it's automatically filtered for me. Now, if I click on over to the JS or the JavaScript here, you can see there's really not a lot going on. It's just the different values. And then you call new list on that and boom, you are good to go. Now, you can also add items to the list. Um, there's removing lists, searching, and even pagination available. So this is a, a really, really flexible library, and probably the best part about it is that it is just vanilla JavaScript. So you don't need to have the overhead of a framework if you're just putting a few different items on the page. So yeah, check that out, list.js, version one. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is a really cool blog post called Exploring Canvas Drawing Techniques. Now, in this post, they're talking about some work that they recently did on Fabric.js, which is an HTML5 canvas library. It allows you to draw on the canvas and even animate elements. It's pretty neat. So definitely be sure to check out Fabric.js. But they had this simple pencil tool and it was far too simplistic. Uh, for their taste. So they went ahead and not only created some more advanced drawing tools, but they even created this really extensive tutorial that shows you how you would create these same effects. Wow. So I can go ahead and draw on the canvas with a simple pencil. I can draw with varying thickness here, and you can even have shadows that kind of make a painterly looking effect. And if I scroll down even further here, you can see just how many types of brushes are available in this tutorial. You can scroll down even further and you should be able to do patterns. Yeah, there we go, down here. So you can go ahead and randomize stuff. You can make, uh, yeah, there we go, pattern-based brushes. It's pretty incredible and there really isn't a whole lot out there about drawing to the canvas in this kind of fluid, paintbrush format. So definitely be sure to check this article out. There's a lot of really innovative stuff here. Uh, it's pretty cool. I just made a little drawing on, <clears throat> on my screen. I'm not sure if we can cut to it. It's your name, but instead of a dot over the eye, it's a heart. Oh, that's very nice, Jason. 
Next up, we have a project called Sortable, which kind of like list.js makes it super easy to sort tables with practically no code. So this is a drop-in, huh. yeah. So this is a drop-in replacement rather than having to programmatically put in the data. It works really, really well on an existing table. So oh, let's... Uh, glad we we're able to sort that out. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wanted to make a pun, but I couldn't think of one in time. So here's a list of different browsers and their usage of when they were released. And I can go ahead and click on usage and it automatically sorts by that. Now, what's nice about this, you really just drop it in, done. Um, you can add the different theme. It comes with a few different themes, uh, as it says, for every occasion. Um, so it's got a minimal theme, light theme, dark theme, uh, kind of, you know, just, just a few different ones here. Anyway, very, very easy to use. Like I said, not a lot going on here. Just tell it how to sort and you are good to go. Sortable.js. Done. That's amazing. So one of the hardest things to do in CSS is figure out how to align things on the page. You might want to align things horizontally or vertically or both. And the way you do that is much different than a lot of other uh, environments like Photoshop when you're trying to align things or maybe even in Xcode when you're trying to align different elements. It takes more work than you would think. It does. It takes a little bit more code and thinking. But fortunately, there's this really wonderful snippet of code here. And there's uh, a picture of Tim here as well. And he went ahead and, and wrote this snippet. Basically, it just shows you how to align things horizontally and vertically. So here's the code to do that. And it also shows you what the browser support for that code is. And there's a couple of other methods here to do that. So you can go ahead and do that, uh, say, with percentages here. And in addition to that, he also shows you how to align things if you just want to do it horizontally or if you just want to do it vertically. Um, so, for example, you could go ahead and use display table if you wanted to go ahead and fake tables rather than actually using the markup for them. But uh, anyway, it's a really wonderful snippet here because this feels like something that you know you have to do all the time and you never know how to do quite right in that particular context. So it's good to have a bunch of different code here that you can go ahead and refer to. Yeah, nice, uh, nice little bookmarklet. Pretty cool stuff. Well, on Twitter, I am at Nick RP. And I am at Jay Cypher. If you want more information on anything we talked about, check out our show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse or search for us in iTunes at the Treehouse Show. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design, web development, mobile business, and so much more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week.